All right, so I have this image from the internet, just a bunch of random scratches, and the image is 2048 by 2048. I'm going to prep it to become a stamp from a texture. Now, very important to know that there is no depth information here. So for whatever depth I'm getting is from the image contrast. Okay. So the trick is to up the contrast ratio, which can be done under image adjustment levels. So I've upped this to a pretty good standard, I think. Another thing you should do is sharpen whatever image that you have. So I use Smart Sharpen for that. And I've already sharpened this one, so I can't sharpen it any further. Maybe a little. Now, let's make a duplicate of this, uh, in case I screw up. I use a brush in here, so it's an eraser. It's chalk. It's that one right there. And what I'll do is go in to brush, choose shape dynamics, angle jitter all the way up, and turn off pen pressure. Okay. Now I will clip away at this and try to get it directly in the center. pretty good like that that's what I'm gonna have right there now let's go in and get rid of this one I feel that I have not screwed up enough or I can get rid of this now I can get rid of this and this one I'm gonna rename to map one or something else doesn't matter what you call it just not layer map one then I'll save this as a TIFF. Now, another thing is, these are this is rather big, so 2048 is unneeded. 1024 is sufficient for a stamp. But you don't want to lower it until the last minute. And that's why I made sure I uh, over-contrast it and over-sharpened it. So that way, when it does shrink down, it's it's very detailed. Okay, scratch four. I'll call that out of my desktop. And none for the compression. Okay, now let's go over to Mudbox. I'll grab a cube. Go to the Sculpt Tools. Go to Sculpt. Go in here. Add Stamp. Go to desktop. Now if I add it like this, it will be on my desktop and if I ever get rid of it, I got rid of it, it will be gone forever out of Mudbox also. So I haven't installed it in the major directory yet. Because I'm not sure if I want to or not. So there it is. I'll choose it. Okay, let's up the level polygons to level 9. And let's go in here and kind of look at how detailed that is. Okay, see how it's it's falling off but it's it's building up the surface a lot. That's caused because of the fact that it is from the internet a texture and it doesn't have that translucent information here like this one for example notice that the height of it is covered over by a transparency where this one does not have that so it's always going to affect the surface that way 
Now, never fear, there is a quite a use for this brush. And it's used more like this. Let's go into the paint tools. Make a new paint layer. Let's go to the airbrush. I like using the airbrush. Use this. There we go. All kinds of detail. Where's our bump information though? Well, unfortunately, um, our bump information is being caused by the diffuse. I have to go like this. Uh, I'll create a new layer called bump I'll take this one and duplicate it oh I have a move to feature now Ooh. move to uh, no I want to duplicate it move to bump map and then I think it's this one that I'm affected so I could turn it down yep right click and I want to say normal map from bump okay now I can just get rid of my bump map and I do that by deleting both of these and the normal map I could just turn way down So there's my normal map based upon my color map. So the two matches, uh, the two match. Now, the only thing with this, this is great for surface detail, like concrete, steel, stuff like that. It works perfectly. But remember, this doesn't have very much height information. So you can't really use it to change the surface so much that it has deep cracks. You know what I mean? So this is great for certain things. And surface information is one of them. So using a stamp to create a texture to create a normal map. That's this workflow. You can use it to sculpt, but the problem with that is now I don't have any information or any way to put color aligned with the actual sculpt. And that's where stencils come in that kind of changes that workflow a little bit. This still has a lot of detail though. All right, so that's that workflow to create a stamp from an image online to use to paint. Enjoy.